meeting um, here in attendance virtually. We have pre meeting. Pre meeting. Pre. Pre. Did I say pre meeting? I probably didn't because I love your lamps on the wall, by the way. Is that there? What are the. Me? Orange and blue. Are the, oh, oh, those are pen, pen holes. It's a little pegboard and it's a little. Oh, it's cool. Like little things. Hey, um, it would be pretty awesome if you just ran on your elliptical through majority of this meeting. <laughs> I should. <laughs> that would be like. <laughs> That'd be like a, a hybrid of Susan who, who watches. And yes, yeah, that would be awesome. Anyway, so in attendance, we have Mr. Travis Ney. We have Sue Wilson. We have Ned Hacker, Lisa Milkevich, Phil Markham, and then myself, Scott Woodbury, the assistant chair, but acting as the chair today uh, as part of the agreement that Mr. Markham and I negotiated uh, yeah. in a tough negotiation. Still waiting for that uh, payment, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's coming, I'm sure. Thank you. And... Uh, and we anticipate being joined by Marin Patterson, but she's not here yet. And then also Jared Hall. Um, so we, it looks like we have, we had nine items on the agenda, but um, item number nine, Jamestown subdivision project was pulled from the agenda. And obviously the site plan review, Taco Bell was withdrawn on the, the 28th. And Zach, do you wanna tell us about number seven right now? Or do you wanna wait? You want to go backwards, or do you want to? No, I, I just was oh, trying. To... Just, just specifically number seven. Okay. Uh, I, no, I, I was just going through the items that were withdrawn, so we can focus oh. on the ones we have to discuss. Yes, we can do so, that. So, just that for, um, let me let Jared in real quick. Hold on. One no, keep keep him out. Make him beg. <laughs> hey, Jared. Sure it, he doesn't oh. need to beg. He he would gladly not be here. If you make him beg, he he. He won't be in this meeting. <laughs> Let's go away. Is that what we're discussing? Because yes. no, I'm no, good. we we want you. Yes. So, okay. okay. Good. So, yeah, uh, we're still waiting for um, Lisa, but uh, I'm sorry, not Lisa. Marin. Marin's uh, actually not going to be attending tonight. She's not able. I'm okay, supposed so to no, that. No, no, Marin. Okay. No Marin tonight. So this is our full house then. Yes. Okay. So. Um, Vertical Bridge, Jared, I, I stole your thunder, and um, they have um, officially withdrawn their application entirely. Okay. Um, so there is no need to continue the item. Um, it's just withdrawn. So that's that. And okay. so you are down to three items to review today. So since we're talking about that, what does that officially mean? Yeah, it simplifies tonight's meeting, but have they left Murray or? Um, so I, I, we're not sure exactly what it means, but I will give you the nickel tour of the history of the last couple of weeks. Um, I gave them an email expressing that, uh, they, they asked, well, what, what's the planning commission looking for? I copied the draft minutes and sent to them and, and then highlighted what I figured, uh, we were asking them to do, which was harden up exactly where it was and show that it was 330 feet from all the residential around it. Cause I didn't think we could give them the exception. Uh, that was in the staff report um, after looking at it more carefully. And they said, well, okay, um, fine. And then what else? And we said, we well, also need to go through basically a site selection survey and show the planning commission why this site was chosen, show that you can't co-locate, et cetera, et cetera. You remember your meeting, right? Um, they went away for a while and said, okay, we'll do what we can. Um, right before the deadline to really deal with anything, they sent back a response and said, hey, our clients, attorneys basically gave us this response. And the response was to my email that said, here are the rules you need to, to meet and show that you're satisfying. And the attorneys basically said, we're not subject to, because of the Spectrum Act, and you'll all remember the Spectrum Act from when we did the small wireless facilities ordinance. Because of the Spectrum Act, cities aren't allowed to tell us how high we can build things or where we can put things or how many we can build. It's basically not in your jurisdiction anymore. And we have not found that to be the case, that. The last adjustment that we made, if you remember, was because of a, a ruling and order that was put out by the FCC, but it all has to do with stuff in the right of way and small wireless facilities, not transmit towers like this. So I basically sent back an email saying, uh, we don't think that's the case. So do you, you want to comply or what do you want to do or, or show us what you're doing? But we don't agree. So tell us what you want. And they came back and said, well, okay, um, can you give us more time to, to show compliance? And that's when we sent the memo to you all in the packet 
And this latest one to me is um, they were concerned after that, that they were concerned about making that 330 foot separation work and wondered about getting a variance for it. I advised them that I didn't think it would qualify for a variance because um, they, the only reason they couldn't locate in the right place was because the power company wouldn't let them go further into the property or locate in a certain place. That's not going to make a variance. It's not going to meet the tests. So my my view is that the withdraw, and then the latest that we got was this email tonight asking just to withdraw the application. My view of it is that they're probably, in all likelihood, they're withdrawing because they can't make it work and they're recognizing that they are actually subject to these rules. That doesn't mean they won't be back, but they'll have to reapply and we'll take it as it comes. So, but, but they don't have to wait a year because it wasn't denied, right? It's, right, and it's not a, the only thing you have to wait a year for is um, a denial of zone change application. Oh, zone change, right, right. Yeah, so okay. they won't have to wait a year. They could be back, but I think the site probably just doesn't work for them. They thought it did, and it doesn't seem like it really does. Yeah. Not because it couldn't be done, but because the power company won't let them put it where they need to. So yeah. we'll, be, we'll be done. I think we're done, but we'll see. Okay. Well, good. Good, we, Jared. We want to just get through that that one. So now we'll go through and and uh, um, and and talk about the items that are actually on the agenda today. So the first, the first one is the and Melinda joined us. Welcome, Melinda. It's always good to have you. And um, so the first one is the approval of the minutes, and we have two sets: uh, July second, and July sixteenth. Um, obviously, July second was you know there's a lot there, and July sixteenth I. You know, I read the minutes from July 16th um, based on what I heard because I watched the meeting and and it seemed to be much more congruous than than I, I heard. I heard buffering throughout the whole thing. So I was watching it from an airplane. So I didn't those weren't sound like you actually. Sense, yeah. yeah, it made a little more sense. Um, they didn't say froze here and paused here. But anyway, did, did everyone have a chance to review those review those minutes? Yeah, I had yeah, to, I have you know, a, at. Go ahead. I have two attribution uh, changes, one in each set. So I have one on page six, paragraph five. I think it was actually Phil that made that statement, not me. Six, paragraph five. Page six, paragraph five. Yeah, it starts with Mr. Day. I think it should be Mr. Markham. <clears throat> it's actually, it's I good. think I made that one. Mr. Ned made that one. I think I did. Do you remember, Phil? I remember. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, about, I didn't say that. I remember yeah, about the me. sign. Um, I remember talking about that. Okay. I had that yeah. same one question, Travis. Yeah. Okay. And then I had one on page four of the of the July sixteenth. Again, paragraph five, and I would attribute this one to Ned as well. You guys sound alike, so you know. right. Yep. Page 16, paragraph five, did you say? Um, so page four, paragraph five. Sorry, I don't know where I got 16. <laughs> That's uh, Mr. Nay asked Mr. Poirier. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yep, I, I asked him that. Okay. I don't have any, any in um, July 16th. These minutes look great. But I had two other little ones in July 2nd on right. page two. Um, the, the first time uh, Mr. Morris was noted, the, um, the second line from the bottom of that paragraph starts with survey consisted of 18 different types and was distributed is it 18 different questions on the survey that sounds about right i took the survey it was yeah maybe I about that long yeah 18 different questions and was distributed through facebook so that was one the other one was down um third paragraph from the bottom mr morris said and then uh halfway through there um the most significant pieces of the project is it is is supposed to be R. So other than that, these they look great. Okay. And pending anybody else's questions about the minutes, I would ask this group: Do we need this kind of detailed minutes for our meetings? 
One, um, we do make uh, decisions and give recommendations to the council. However, um, it's also recorded audio, in which case, if you do have to go back, you have a detailed audio uh, trail uh, versus the amount of time and effort that go into these, I know is tremendous because we do them for all of our board meetings, um, of which several years ago we cut back when audio was required um, and we cut back on the amount of minutes that were actually produced. So that's, that's just a question to, to the group if you think that's needed. I mean, they're, they're a great reminder. I like pretty much actually to read them, so. But I know they take a lot of time and maybe the staff's time could be better spent. Um, well, and, you know, Ned, that might be a question for the city attorney as well. I'm, I'm not sure. I maybe, don't know. maybe. Anyway, you don't have to take those kind of minutes anymore. I know that for sure, but. That's so, just, Ned, I, I'm just curious what kind, how, how in depth do we need to be? That from your your understanding, um, some some of what the uh, motions, the motions okay. who made the motions, okay, and the what, vote. The pro what the project is, what the motions is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, our two hour meetings are condensed to like three pages. Yeah. And they're they're pretty concise. And like I yeah. said, Scott, there's there's an audio, and I yeah. think there's a video that's maintained as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, now, now there's a video and there's been a video for a few years, right? You know, there, there, yeah. there, there wasn't a video, um, but there has been now recently. So again, for me personally, I, like I said, I, I kind of enjoy reading them just to remember, uh, bring back what we dis discussed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little hard to uh, take all of that in during the meeting versus reading it again. It's a good reminder. Um, but, Believe me, I know how much time goes into putting the minutes together. So, and, no, that, and maybe time can be well better spent by the staff doing uh, other research and helping other customers. I don't know, but I think, as you said, Phil, maybe asking the attorney what uh, what they think is appropriate. And I don't know what the city council does. Yeah, I I think you'd actually it'd be more interesting to. Um, take a little bit of editing and, and actually clip it into the audio or the video by segment. So if I wanted to just, so if I was reading the minutes and oh. I wanted to say click here to, you know, and, and I could go listen to just that one item, um, you know, I think that would be really interesting. So we don't do that, Scott, but what we do is they put a timestamp in oh, the time stamps. Okay. That so where there's a, a motion or a, uh, some critical um, topic, they put a timestamp in so you can go back to the audio or and the, that pro and that probably preserves it better and the integrity and the trust in it so that's a good point i you know because it would be nice to go and, and listen to them occasionally and you know but I, I i certainly would you know the staff that's a good suggestion ned and i'd like to hear what the staff says going forward it certainly does take a lot of work and but we do appreciate what the staff does so anyway they're great minutes yeah so they are they're very good they're not, bang up job on the minutes so good kudos I, people. thank you ned for that um are there any conflicts of interest for any of the items with any of the items on tonight's agenda no no okay awesome um and then we don't have any approvals fines and effects so so sorry sue you'll have to make a motion on something else tonight you can do it though okay all right mr zach it's the it's the zach show tonight um it's so Jared's just there for eye candy. So it's all about you, Zach. So go ahead. <laughs> awesome. And I love that Jared tried to say something, but he's on mute. So nobody could. <laughs> which it, which so. was just simply eye continue. candy. <laughs> exactly. Because eye candy doesn't talk. So there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's there to be seen, not heard. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> anyway. I, yes. Item number four, conditional use permit, plumbing and heating contractor. Yes, this is an application for a contractor in the MG zone. The MG is our manufacturing zone. It's within the, um, you guys know it as Garco. It's on 5th West, just north of uh, Big Cottonwood uh, Creek. There, it's taking unit number 20, which is closest. It's kind of the north northeast side of it. It's, it's at the end of that building there. Uh, fairly 
uh, fairly um, straightforward. Uh, is just using it mainly as storage, I believe. And then it will be, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's it's not much. We don't require a lot for Garco. Uh, their landscaping's been addressed in other units. Um, access is always an issue in Garco, but that's just what it is as part of it. Um, yep. Any questions or anything for me at this point? I mean, it didn't look like we received any public comments and we, we don't anticipate any coming in. No. Um, you know, this is a pretty a pretty standard one. Um, you know, obviously we have, I, I did have a question. It was just more, I wondered why on the public notice of public meeting, the dollar sign shows up on the middle of I-15. Oh, uh, it's because there should be like a label there, but it just, the, the mapping software, the GIS we use, I think that layer is broken. Yeah. So it just shows up as a dollar sign now. I just so. thought it was interesting. I'm like, you know, we're- That's where all your taxpayer money goes. Uh, all, well, all your and, gas goes to paying for that yeah, freeway. That, that what we're actually sending out to the public shows up with a big old dollar sign on it. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I, we will yeah. fix it's that. GIS oh, yeah. glitch. Yeah. yeah. So any, any comments on this one from the commission? Very straightforward. Okay. All right, Mr. Mr. Zach, agenda item number five. Yes, uh, again, this is, permit. yep, this is a conditional use permit for auto sales in Garco. Uh, this is uh, unit number 898, which is the furthest north. There's there's 99 units in, in Garco. This is number 98. This is the furthest north up to for that. It's, uh, let's see. George Abdallah with Black Diamond Auto Collision. He wants to do, currently he obviously does auto collision, body repair type things. He would like to change and do auto sales, fix his own vehicles and then do auto sales there on the lot. We do have some concerns that as you, you noticed in your staff report, there were quite a bit of cars already parked out there. So we are stating that striping needs to be redone there and any cars for sale need to be entirely within the, the unit there. And also no parking in front of the garage doors. We don't allow that there. Uh, I'll, I'll, although I did notice that, you know, it says that traditionally we, um, you know, that's where they can put the ADA. Maybe that was in the other one, the other applicant. But, it, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, that is typically, um, let me double check. And this is also the one that needs the restroom, right? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So did we just- That was by we, the, the, go ahead. I was gonna say, did we decide, I noticed on this one, we haven't separated it, you know, the 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 landowner, the applicant, um, you know, the, 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 did we decide not to do that, you know, as far um, as applicant versus the, you know, cause it's like the applicant has to put in the restroom and the applicant has to do this. And we understand that it has to be done, but I just, cause I know we had discussed that, you know, last time, whether we felt like it was an effective way of putting the conditions on there. Yeah. And I haven't, um, I, I, I did it once and then I, I've kind of been rethinking it a little bit okay. to, to, to decide whether it's, it's an effective way to do things. And I haven't really come to a conclusion yet. So I mean, did did it work for you guys? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Was it helpful? Lisa says yes. Okay. I I do think that there are a lot of these things that you know. So it it seems to put a lot of burden onto the the applicant. Now we we know the reality is that you know the landlord wants the revenue. That's why they rent these things out, and and they have to work with the landlord to do it. But we also know that there are certain areas of the city that we don't seem to to always get it doesn't seem like we're getting what we want when we just kind of like yeah you need to strive them you need to do this and whether they actually you know get done I, I mean i know we say that they have to in order to get the business license but i don't know lisa says she likes them but does, I, any, does anyone else have feelings well i'm constantly learning and i mean that's i like reading the minutes sometimes because it read the minutes and like that's not what i was thinking that's probably what i said i'm, I'm learning but um I think it's nice. So, uh, um, 
that we are giving some responsibility to the owner because I think, like me, some of the applicants don't know everything about what's going on, you know, the process or um, ordinances or whatnot. So if you say applicant in there, I would walk away thinking I have to build a toilet. I wouldn't even argue it with the landlord, I don't think. So I think it is nice yeah, that, for that reason. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. We'll let you ponder on it, Zach. And if you have an epiphany at a later date on how you want to do it, certainly enlighten us. So, okay. Item number six, I guess, any, any other thoughts on number five? Um, yeah, I was just... I, I was just wondering how the uh, the the language is coming on that uh, potential ordinance change requiring a minimum size lot in order to uh, sell cars in Murray. Yeah, um, I, Jared, I, sec I second that. So, Jared, with me being home, um, I'll, I'll I'll cite this again. I did it in my uh, in our MCC design review committee. With me being home, I'm about a um, hundred million times more productive um, so, and I'm able to do a lot um, being at home. So that's one of the things that Jared and I need to touch base on and, and, and talk about because that is something that I think we both are pretty uh, passionate about. We need to um, see if there's, no offense, but I have to, we also have to see if there's political will to do it as well. Sure, um, I understand. And um, I think at this point, it, it's something going forward. Right now, my mind has been solely focused on um, rewriting the MCCD design guidelines, um, which should, um, bringing that up, it should be before you in the next, uh, probably in September sometime. Um, and so once that's done, that's a big weight off of me that I've been it soaked in for three months. So I think that we'll get a little bit further ahead on that soon. Jared, anything It is something that done? Zach and I talked at the beginning of the year, of the year about getting done before uh, you guys are off, done with your terms, Scott and Phil. <laughs> well, since it was kind of not your baby, but your baby. So we thought we'd try to get it done before you leave office as it were. So, right. so, have a so more minutes to finish it. It's not a complicated ordinance, probably, but Zach's right. We do need to test the waters for political will, make sure we're not. Sure, I understand that. So, so Jared, I mean, if you're trying to finish some things off for Phil and I, do we have an update on uh, on chickens? Um, you know, you 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 get what you pay for. You, <laughs> you gotta you gotta um, an update on chickens. No, we're not tackling chickens, but bees are coming your way again. I know. I'm excited. That, right? so. Love love bees. So, yep. the bees right. all right. We'll try to fix. Agenda item number six. Wait, okay. I'm not done with the last one yet. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I just I have a question on um the on the conclusion and recommendation number four. Do we need to put anything on there that they, um, it says all parking outside the unit shall be used for customers and or employees. Do we need to add in designated stalls? Because I noticed in those pictures you included, there's a lot of double parking and randomized parking. And they might say, well, we're, we only have three cars parked out there, but do they need to, do we need to specify that they should be in their designated stalls? Uh, by all means, if you want to include that in, in a motion, you can. Uh, I, mm. well, but Zach, doesn't that mean they would have to actually designate the stalls? So they would actually have to put up a sign, something that says, you know, parking for, um, you know, this uh, black diamond auto collision sales only, right? Um, or they could just number so. them. I mean, I, I don't think they would have to actually designate them. It just would have to be, I mean, they would have to be in a parking stall. Um, okay. I, I don't think saying saying that you know you must be that parking must be provided in you know a parking stall is is on. Okay. I don't even know where I was going with that. Yeah. But, but yeah, yes, I, 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 I think I, you I, can. Go ahead, Lisa. Did Sue request somewhat similar to what we said on the other item when we told them they're not allowed to park on Cherry Street? Is it is it maybe more appropriate to just say you have to park within the complex, not on the main road, or something of that nature, instead of saying in stall one, two, and three, or I don't know. But well, I mean, isn't that more of just an enforcement in general rather than a specific to this application is you shouldn't, you should park in a parking stall, right? That's correct. Yeah, it would be more of an enforcement issue. And and typically we don't see 
um, the parking spill out onto Fifth West anyway within the, I mean, at least it deep into Garco like this is, you wouldn't see that um, okay. so much. So, so saying on the street necessarily isn't a thing, but yeah, yeah I wouldn't. I don't think it's necessary either way. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. You're fine. That's a good, <laughs> that's a, that's a good question, though. I'm glad you, you brought that up. So, okay. All right. We've got just a few minutes. Zach, anything? Uh, not number six? Um, how about, let's see. Yeah. So this one's pretty straightforward. Just asking for, um, I get, the, uh, this is a property management and maintenance contractor. So, you know, like I mentioned, contractors are conditional. Uh, this one, the only real thing I need that, that I think is important is um, kind of bringing up the landscaping in that area. There is a power, there, there is a, I can't even remember what I called it, a transformer enclosure pretty much that uh, power has. It's one of the only ones in the valley from what I understand from power. We're just asking for that area and the to be landscaped. I don't have any concerns there. Again, this is mostly being used for storage. Uh, so, all, all the go ahead. So, Zach, is that why number one says property owners shall work with city staff is because of the uniqueness of the landscaping? Correct. Yeah, and yeah, I mean that would be uh, if you look at the site plan that was in the packet, that right. you can tell that you know the. It, Cherry, all these units are pushed pretty far back from Cherry Street. So the, the property owner would be the... the right. But normally we would say the applicant shall be responsible for the, the landscape plan, right? Um, it depends on the type of application. Usually for these, I usually do the property owner is responsible for that landscaping. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I understand and, you know, to the earlier conversation that that yeah, it's clear for the applicant per Lisa's point, you know, what their responsibility is. Right. And so, for example, if the if the applicant was taking like all five units or taking like the entire building, then I probably would have said the applicant is responsible for the landscaping there as opposed to the property owner. OK, that makes sense. OK, any questions from the commission on item number six? This is the only one I kind of had a question on. Um, it all seems straightforward, but um, maintenance and man property maintenance and management is kind of really broad. And so I was just wondering what kind of equipment they're playing on storing because when we get into the details of it, maybe there should be some regulation or some requirements around that equipment or material if we knew more about it. Is it just lawnmowers and shovels? And I don't know. No, I haven't. Typically in, in these zones, I don't usually bring up, you know, hard and fast on that one. This one was, this guy came in and wanted to apply for a business license and we told him, oh, wait a minute. You actually have to go through conditional use to get this here. Um, if, if I believe it, if I understand it correctly, it's like, yeah, it's lawn mowers and things of that nature. I don't anticipate- Snow plows would, and stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah. anticipate there would be large, um, equipment there we don't have pallets, pallets of ammonium nitrate <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly well I, I mean that's i think you know fresh on all of our minds is is i'm sure that's just part of standard you know code of what you can and can't store so um, well that's part of fertilizer too so it wouldn't be that far-fetched if i asked him he'll probably give a really decent answer it would be fine but then it shows due diligence on our part in the record that yeah. we asked right is that okay i think it's fine if you ask him i you know i, I don't know and zach and jared and you know, and, and would have to tell us what, based on the answer, what legal they have. Anyway, looks like we're right up against the time. So um, 6.29, according to my computer, 6.30, according to one of my clocks in my house. So Zach, anything else or we just jump uh, in? Nope, they, I don't have anything else at the moment unless anybody else has anything that they need to talk about beforehand. Okay, and we are grateful that Jared joined us. Yes. Okay. Okay. You are more than welcome to start it up when you're ready. So we need a drink. We'll let everyone take a little drink and okay. All right. Look, everybody, okay. all of you did it. <laughs> yeah. 
got my hospital uh, mug. It's 32 ounces. It's easy to track my hydration. There you go. And it has a nice straw. So, all right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we jump in? So, um, welcome everyone to the August sixth. All those participating online, the August sixth Murray City Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, I am the the vice chair, but as part of a, a previously discussed um, arrangement with Commissioner Markham, with with Chair Markham, uh, we are going to rotate um, who chairs each meeting. We're both in our last term, and so we're we're. We're uh, taking turns on who will chair the meeting. So I'm the vice chair, but we'll be chairing this evening's meeting. Um, so a, a quick statement. Um, you know, I, as the, the acting chair of the Murray Planning Commission, uh, Scott Woodbury, have determined that due to the rise in COVID-19 cases and counts, holding an in-person meeting with an anchor location presents a substantial risk to the health and safety of those in attendance. Under these circumstances, House Bill 5002, an amendment to the Open and Public Meetings Act allows for electronic meetings to be held without an anchor location, so long as the public has an opportunity to view the meeting and submit public comments. We are holding tonight's Planning Commission meeting via video conference, and the meeting is being live streamed at murraycitylive.com. If you have a public comment to submit to the Planning Commission, please do so via email at planningcommission at murray.utah.gov. All right, in attendance, we have from the commission, uh, we have Chairman Markham, Phil Markham, we have Travis Ney, we have Sue Wilson, Lisa Milkevich, and Ned Hacker. Uh, Marin Patterson from the commission is excused for tonight's meeting. Also from staff, we have Zachary Smallwood, Jared Hall, and Melinda Greenwood, and Bryant Farnsworth. So uh, we have a few items on the agenda. Tonight, um, just before we we start, uh, we do have nine. There were nine items on the agenda, and just so people know, uh, item number nine was pulled from the agenda earlier tonight. Um, we'll we'll show up on another one. That was the Jamestown subdivision project. Um, number eight, site Taco Bell site plan review was withdrawn on the twenty eighth, and then um, earlier today, the number seven vertical bridge development was withdrawn as well. So the only items we have on tonight's agenda are uh, three conditional use permits for precise plumbing, black diamond auto collision, and peak property solutions. So um, we will start with the approval of minutes as everyone on the commission had an opportunity to review the minutes. We have two sets from July 2nd and July 16th. Yep, everyone's good? Yep. Mr. Okay. Chairman, yep. I'd like to make a motion that the Planning Commission approve uh, meeting minutes from Planning Commission meeting dated Thursday, July 2nd, 2020, uh, with a few minor uh, corrections that we made during our pre-meeting, uh, and that we approve the Thursday, July 16th, 2020, Planning Commission meeting minutes with, again, a couple of minor corrections that we talked to at our pre-meeting. I'll second. second. Oh, sorry, Phil. Okay. It's okay, Sue. I have a motion by Mr. Hacker to approve the meetings uh, or the minutes from the July 2nd and the July 16th meetings um, with a few minor modifications that were discussed in our, our pre-meeting um, for context and attribution and a few things. Um, and a second by Mr. Markham. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right, the second thing, conflicts of interest. Is there anyone that has a conflict of interest with the uh, items on the agenda today? No. No? No. no? no. Okay, good. No conflicts of interest. All right, item number three is approval of findings of fact, and there are no findings of fact in this um, packet today. And so we will move on to item number four, which is a conditional use permit uh, for plumbing and heating contractor. Um, to be operating in in the business in the MG zone, and Mr. Zach Smallwood will take this item. So, Mr. Smallwood, okay, thank you so much. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now let's see if Zach can make his screen. There we go. Go forward. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so, as you had stated, Chair, uh, precise plumbing is 
requesting conditional use permit approval for a plumbing and heating contractor business at 4195 South 500 West, unit number 20. That is located uh, in that yellow box on your screen. That is the development also known as GARCO right there on 500 West. The yellow box is uh, approximately where unit number 20 is next to I-15 there. Contracting businesses are allowed in the manufacturing MG zone subject to conditional use permit approval. The applicant has stated that they will be using this largely as a storage site for, for their equipment as, as for to operate the business there. This is just a floor plan showing the, the storage and you know the restroom that's on in the in the unit. Couple site photos for you. Uh, this one is, as you can see, has been recently uh, striped with its parking. And we're, we are not recommending any additional parking requirements or striping there along that, at that unit. So that one's pretty quick and easy. We are recommending that uh, the Planning Commission approve the conditional use permit subject to the five conditions below. And are there any questions for, for me and staff at this point? Thank you, Mr. Smallwood. Any, any questions for Mr. Smallwood about this application? No, I think okay. Um, we may have some, Zach, hold on. We'll, we'll see, okay. is, the, is the applicant here? Mr. Mr. Bueller, Russ Bueller. He was here. It looks like, well, I see him. It just looks like he's on mute. He's so, still muted. Yeah, he's still muted. Zach, is, you have keys to the kingdom. Did that right, work? Mr. Yep, you're good, there we Mr. Go. Mr. Bueller. Okay. All right, Mr. Bueller, please um, state your name and address <laughs> for the record. So um, my name is Darwin Russell Bueller. My, the address that got my my the address I'm hoping to get the business license for. Uh, you, what other address is fine? Yeah, like you can do your home address if you want or or whatever. Okay, so 4195 South 500 West, Unit 20. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I don't uh, Murray, Utah. I don't know the zip code. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine, Mr. Bueller. So, um, have you? Is there anything that you'd like to tell us about uh, about your business or anything to add to Zach's presentation? <clears throat> uh, no, he. He pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, mainly, we're just a small plumbing and heating company. Um, operates along Wasatch Front. And uh, we're just hoping to pretty much store things here and kind of to the central in the valley for us traveling the corridor. Good. Good. And have you had an opportunity to review the five conditions of approval up here on the screen? Yeah, I have. And do you have uh -huh. any questions? Do you have any questions about those? Um, the applicant shall, number three, the applicant shall maintain clear access in front of the building mm -hmm. and adequate fire lanes. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, I mean, we keep that open, but people park in front of our stuff all the time. I don't, I come down there and, and the front of it will be parked or blocked consistently. Do you want me to put up some no parking signs? Yeah, I'll let staff address that one as kind of best practices and what they'd recommend. And I, I appreciate you recognizing that. That is that's certainly um, something we've noticed with other applicants in this um, complex. Um, so I will let staff a address that. But other other than that, well, I, you know, including that and with staff addressing it, are you able to comply with these five conditions? Oh yeah, yeah. We won't have any yeah, won't any problems with any of those. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. um, any questions for the applicant from the commission? No. no? Okay, good. Um, hold on, Mr. Bueller. We'll have, um, I'll let Zach, if you could address number three, and then we'll open it up for public comment. Yeah, so this is typically a, a comment that's provided uh, or a requirement provided by the fire department, I believe. So they just like to have make sure that you're aware that you know if there's need, is an emergency or anything like that. A lot of the times, as long as you're parking within uh, parking stalls, we don't have any issues. It's when there are double or triple cars parked 
as long as they're not affiliated with your business, you're not going to have any problems there. Okay. Oh, okay, perfect. So we don't have any customers coming here. We don't have, we have nothing. <laughs> it's strictly yeah. pretty much a place for us to pick up a router machine or a camera and go about our business. Okay. Yeah, and that's what the, the, typically this is for fire, so that they can get adequate access <laughs> if there were, for, God forbid, ever a an emergency there or anything like that. This is just you know, as long as you're not parking any cars there that, that aren't red, you know, that aren't in a parking stall, stall, that's all that's, that's all that really requires. Okay. So well, if that's the case, if, as long as that's okay, I, you know, I, I don't have any problems obtaining any of those things. Good. I can comply with all five of those. Perfect. And Mr. Buell, I appreciate you asking about number three, but just to make sure you understand what the expectations are. Um, and, and Zach, thank you for your for your um, clarification on that. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and open it up to the public for any public comments. Again, a reminder, you can email the planning commission at murray.utah.gov and we'll wait just a couple of minutes to see if we, if we receive any public um, comment on this. So, okay. Zach, are you checking it tonight or is, um, is Jared checking? I think we're both we, checking, but I am checking. Just right. keep hit. Just keep hitting refresh, Jared. We're both yes. wondering, but there's nothing so far. There's nothing coming. Okay. Well, I think um, this one's not really controversial to have a plumbing and heating contractor. So, and, and Miss, I, I think we'll, we'll we're okay to close the public comment on this one. So we'll close the public comment and bring it back to the commission for any questions or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that the Planning Commission approve a conditional use permit to allow the operations of plumbing and heating contractor business on the property located at 4195 South, 500 West, unit number 20, subject to conditions one through five. I'll Mr. Second. Chair, oh, sorry, Sue, go okay. for it. Early All second. right. So I've got a motion to approve a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a plumbing and heating and contractor business on the property located at 4195 South, 500 West, Unit 20, subject to conditions one through five. I've got a motion by Mr. Hacker and a second by my chairman, my council person, Mrs. Wilson. So, all right, uh, Mr. Smallwood, you calling for the vote? Yeah, so um, let's see, Commissioner Hacker? Yes. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Wood uh, Markham? Yes. Commissioner Nay? Yes. Commissioner Milkevich? Yes. And Acting Chair Woodbury? Yes. Awesome. So the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Bueller, thank you for choosing to do business in Murray. We appreciate it. If you do have any questions as you go forward throughout this, um, please contact the staff. They do a wonderful <coughs> job and can help you with any of those. But thank you again, and we wish you best of luck. Okay, thank you guys very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, I, agenda item number five is another conditional use permit. And this one is for um, auto sales in um, the well i'll let zach do it 4195 south 500 west unit 98 so mr smallwood go ahead very much so yes this is for black diamond auto collision this is like you had stated a conditional use for an auto sales business again this is in the uh garco complex this this time uh, again within in that yellow box it's at the top of your screen pretty close to the top of your screen that's unit 98 uh, unit 99 is right above that. Let's see. So auto sales is allowed within the MG manufacturing zone, subject to a conditional use permit as well, conditional use permit approval. This one, uh, again, is a standard unit, uh, has your typical two parking stalls with the overhead door. This space was largely open, does not have a restroom which the building official is asking that one be installed for this application. Couple site photos here for you. You can see that there are a, a number of vehicles parked in front um, and just across the street as well, just across the access road. 
and we are requiring that uh, those those stalls be restriped um, to allow for the adequate parking there. So with that, that um, because due to the fact that there is limited parking here, we are stating and requesting that the Planning Commission approve the application with the condition that uh, all for sale vehicles only be allowed within uh, the unit. So with that, um, I'm happy to take your questions. Zach, um, do you know, is, is the building, um, is it outfitted for, a, is it plumbed for a restroom and there just hasn't been one constructed? From what I understand from the applicant, when I had a, a brief discussion with them, they have a shared restroom. Um, I believe that every unit is plumbed to allow for a, a restroom, but uh, um, from what I understand, the, the building official is the one that came down and said that the sh they, they need to have one to meet uh, building code. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Bruce Hack? Phil, thank you for asking that. That is one that we don't see very often, so I appreciate you asking that. Okay, all right, is the, uh, is the applicant here? Is that uh, Mr. Abdallah? Is Mr. Abdallah here? He was. I, um, I think he is here. I think that's the LG. Oh, that's L LG Stylo 5. I think okay. so. Okay. Can, can you Mr. hear Abdallah, us? Abdallah, if you could give Mr. us a Abdallah? thumbs up if that's you. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Do you see anyone else on Zach? Or is that Mr. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Mr. Ab Abdallah. Um, okay. Well, oh, Mr. Ab LG Stylo 5. You're not Mr. Abdallah. Okay. All right, he's not Mr. Abdallah. He shook his hand, his, his okay. head. So, okay, well, it doesn't it doesn't appear that the applicant is is on, um, which is okay. Um, just so the public knows, and all those watching, the applicant still is subject to the um, successful completion of all seven of these conditions in order for them to be able to move forward with their with their business. Um, and so. So I guess with that, we will open it up to the public comment and see if there's any public that would like to make a comment. Again, the email planning commission at murray.utah.gov. Looks like Mr. Nay's taking a nap. We're only like 20 minutes into the meeting and you're already tired. So. I'm having lemon pez, actually. Oh, yeah, that's the downside of not being able to meet in person <laughs> is you can't share your pez with us. So, <laughs> well, in this new world, I, you probably can never share pez with another human again. So that's to, probably true. I'll have to buy my own. So, all right. Well, um, no one really cares about Mr. Nay's pez. So with that, we'll probably close the we will close the public comment portion of this and bring it back up to the commission any questions comments um, from the commission or i'd be open to a motion if someone feels so mr chairman i'll i'll make a motion uh, that the planning commission approve a conditional use permit to allow the operation of an auto sales business on the property located at 4195 South, 500 West, unit number 98, subject to conditions one through seven as specified this evening. I'll second the motion. Okay. All right, I have a motion from Commissioner Markham, Chairman Markham, to approve a conditional use permit to allow the operation of an auto sales business on the property located at 4195 South, 500 West, unit number 98, uh, subject to conditions one through seven. And I have a second by Commissioner Milkevich. All right, Mr. Smallwood. I call for a vote. 
I say, sorry. There you go. Oh, there we are. Okay, Commissioner Markham. Yes. Commissioner Milkevich. Yes. Commissioner Hacker. Yes. Commissioner Ney. Yes. Commissioner Wilson. Yes. And Acting Chair Woodbury. Yes. All right, this uh, condition use permit is approved unanimously. And so, Mr. Abdallah, hopefully you'll go back and listen to these and we wish you best of luck in your business. If you do have questions, certainly uh, reach out to the staff. They will be able to help you with that. All right, our last uh, item on the agenda is conditional use permit uh, number six, Peak Property Solutions. So we will turn it over to the star of the show, Mr. Smallwood again, so. It is a, uh, an application for a property maintenance contracting business uh, at 4619 South Cherry Street. That's located approximately here. It's kind of on, it's right near our, our public services office, 4619. Can you guys see my mouse? I'm not mm -hmm. sure. If you can. Okay, okay. It's, so it's located about there. I wasn't sure if it was like the little laser pointer that I always have difficulties with. <laughs> So, so your, your your mouse looks like it's just stuck in the corner. Okay, well that's I can I can see it though. Okay, good. All right, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But yes, it's located here on Cherry Street. Again, a contracting business is uh, allowed within the MG manufacturing zone, subject to conditional use permit approval. Here we have the site plan for this. For this unit, you can see here with the orange X, the specific unit for peak property. And then also you can see where parking is supposed to be laid out on the property. I, I want to make sure that that's um, present here uh, because as you know, in the staff report, I've asked that the property owner, I believe, restripe a lot of this, um, specifically starting with 4619 to stripe those in that area so that we can start to bring that kind of up to up to code and things like that. This specific unit is, has this floor plan here. You can see warehouse and office space with two restrooms. And a couple site photos here for you. So you can see um, on the image on the left-hand side, you can see that little patchy grass area. Uh, that's one of the spots that we're requiring some additional uh, landscaping. And then on the image on the right, you can see that building that I had stated before that was a power um, transformer building where I'm saying, you know, kind of land, install some landscaping there. The property owner would be responsible for that. And then this is specifically the unit 4619 here on the image on the left with um, they, their overhead door and a second man door there as well. I did want to bring attention um, the garbage enclosure that is on site. It, it needs some help. Um, it looks like it, it's, it's seen better days. So um, I don't think it was specifically stated in the staff report because it was after that time that I noticed this and took those photos. So I would, my, I'm not sure, I don't remember, I apologize, but it does need at least some fixing up so that you can actually open and close that um, to meet standards. But with that one new thing, um, I apologize, it is number five. Um, it, it states that if they're gonna have a dumpster then it needs to be enclosed. I would probably just ask that you amend that to repair this one at this point. So we are recommending approval of this conditional use permit um, subject to the six conditions. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Smallwood. Any, con any questions for Mr. Smallwood about this application from the commission? Um, just one quick thing. So you want us to amend number five? Yeah, I would think that would probably be best just amend number five to, to Okay, so can I just do an appropriate dump enclosure that meets the standards in section 17.76.170 of the land use ordinance is required? Yep, that that's work? easy enough. Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Awesome. Okay, any other questions? No? 
already. Uh, is the applicant here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Mr. iPhone. Um, Mr. Blair, it is. Yeah. Would you would you state your name and address for the record? Scott Blair, 1431 South Edison Street, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84115. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blair. And um, do you have anything you'd like to tell the commission about um, the application or any questions? Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Smallwood for doing a thorough job on helping me with this application and um, identifying some of the issues on the property. And I'm sure that we can get items one through six addressed um, with the owner. And, and thank you, Mr. And, and so you have been able to address these items and are you able to comply with them? Yes? Yes, we'll be able to comply. We've already done the striping in front of the 4619 unit. Okay. And we're just gonna um, wait to see what type of plants are acceptable with the city and go from there. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Blair. We appreciate uh, the proactivity on it. So thank you very much. Any You're questions welcome. for the applicant from the from the commission? I have a simple Lisa? question. Hey, Mr. Blair, I I am confident that your answer is gonna be clear. It's simple, but still I wanna ask. Um, what maintenance and management of property, what kind of equipment does that entail for your business? What will be stored there? Well, we're general contractors. So we have everything from paint sprayers, um, drywall texture, lawn mowers, um, you know, landscaping supplies, table saws, you know, anything. We're basically a carpentry type of business. So anything that would have to do with renovating or remodeling a home, those are the type of tools that we'd be storing there. Thanks for that answer. I guess and part of my question probably focuses on local, what's happening in the news currently. What chemicals stored there? I don't know if there's chemicals in drywall material. I don't think there's much. Maybe some in landscaping fertilizers. Are there any other chemicals you might be using? The only chemicals that we would store would be gasoline, fuel, you know, paint thinner, things of that nature. And we do have a flammable cabinet um, that will be in the unit to store those type of flammable items. But we don't store any any ammonia nitrates or anything like that. Thank you. And I, and I don't know enough. I asked the question, but I don't know enough about paint thinner and those kind of chemicals. Jared, is there anything except that cabinet required? I was, I was just going to remind you or, 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 or point out too that in these kind of situations, we do look at it as a cursory item when we're looking at conditional uses and entitlement. But remember the fire department's looked at it and knows these kind of things too. And they will actually, after this entitlement, the fire department will conduct an on-site inspection for the business license when they move in. So all of those kind of things, if they're seeing things that need to be put in cabinets or, or dealt with differently, they'll do that. That's all that fire departments always do a review for business license as well, just as a follow-up, so. Excellent. Then maybe. Maybe it would have been appropriate for me to ask you at the process. Thank you. Thanks no for problem. Answer. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Milkevitz. We appreciate you asking that, obviously, in light of the recent events around the world. So it's uh, always nice to know that uh, that the fire department is diligent on that and that the uh, the applicant understands the importance of safety as well. So we appreciate that. Um, all right, Mr. Blair, we're going to open this up for public comment. And then uh, we may bring you back up if we have additional comments. But um, all right, at this point, we will open uh, up this I agenda item, agenda item number six, to public comment. So feel free to email any questions, comments to planning commission at murray.utah.gov. And Mr. LG Stylo5, um, I, I did send you a message. I apologize, you're unable to hear. Um, is this an item you'd like to make a comment on? Okay. All right. He, he, for the commissioners, uh, LG Stylo5 sent me a, a message saying that he could not hear um, at 6.51. And then I responded and asked what I, item he was interested in. So I haven't heard anything back. Uh, so not sure why I can't hear. 
So I guess that actually um, messaged me okay. um, at 6.59 just a moment ago. Yes, okay. two minutes ago, um, saying that uh, he is George Abdallah. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I did tell him, I said that he's more than welcome to log off, that they that you have approved um, his application and that um, we can reach out to him and kind of discuss what that means. What, did you ask him if he was willing to abide by the conditions or is that? Uh, I didn't actually. Um, if you could, if you could message well, in that, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's they're, true. It's already, it's already passed. They've been yeah. closed, so. Yep, it's already, it's already passed. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He understands the conditions. So thank you, Zach, for, for yeah. working with him on that. So, all right. Um, have we received anything from this item, item number six? No, sir. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and close the public comment portion of of this item and bring it back to the commission for any thoughts, comments, uh, questions, or a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the Planning Commission approve a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a property management and maintenance contractor business on the property address 4619 South Cherry Street as reviewed in the staff report and subject to conditions one through six with a change to number five reading an appropriate dumpster enclosure that meets the standards in section 17.76.170 of the land use ordinance is required. I second that. Okay. All right. I have a motion from Commissioner Wilson to approve a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a property management and maintenance contractor business on the property address 4619 South Cherry Street, subject to conditions one through six, with the change to condition number five as noted by Commissioner Wilson, and a second by Commissioner Milkevich. All right. Mr. Smallwood, if you'd like to call for a vote. All right. Commissioner Wilson. Yes. Commissioner Milkevich? Yes. Commissioner Hacker? Yes. Commissioner Ney? Yes. Commissioner Markham? Yes. And Acting Chair Woodbury? Yes. All right, Mr. Blair, it passes unanimously. We appreciate you choosing to do business in Murray and wish you best of luck in your uh, business. If you do have any questions, reach out to the staff and they would be happy to happy to assist you with that. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for, for joining our meeting. And that is the last item, just for, in, in case anyone joined late, um, item number seven, the vertical bridge development was withdrawn as well, uh, withdrawn just before the meeting. Um, item number eight, Taco Bell site plan review was withdrawn on the 28th and the Jamestown subdivision project number nine was also um, pulled from the agenda today. It was, and so uh, it'll come up another one. Um, so that is our last item on the agenda. Is there anything, Mr. Hall, Mr. Smallwood, um, Mr. Mr. Greenwood, anything that the staff or that the commission needs to be made aware of or anything like that? Any other business? That's a good question. We um, we have an agenda for August 20th meeting um, coming up. A couple of things on there. Um, we mentioned the um, the beekeeping that you already kind of have heard about a little bit. Um, we're going to be looking at that. Susan's working on that for us. Uh, we'd like to simplify in response to another application. We'd like to kind of simplify how we deal with bees. It's a, a whole big thing, but we'll get your report on that. A um, couple of other things on that agenda that will that will require some some real work, so be, be ready. Um, I probably shouldn't say beforehand until they're on an agenda, but you'll see it soon, so. Well, Commissioner Markham will be back in the driver's seat, so uh, Chairman Markham, so it'll be great to have him for those fun ones, so. Um, I I, I was the, I was the I was the chair back in 2014 when bees came to us originally. So I I certainly do have a passion for the bees and the apiaries. I hope we have one in attendance. Yep, definitely. I will forewarn you that it is we do have a zone change on that agenda coming up from CD zoning to mixed use zoning. Yep. Those are always tough. It's a yep. lot of density and things. So yep. be ready to talk about that. It'd be okay. fun. Right, thank you, Mr. Uh, Hall. We appreciate that. Anything else? I have one um, question. One question have, have from Commissioner any, Wilson. Have we heard anything else on the trip view subdivision? What's the stat status on that on the street going through? 
Uh, that's a great question. We have not had a lot of contact with the applicants since your planning commission meeting. Um, they know what to do next. They had some advice from us about how to get on a city council agenda and how to deal with that, but I'm not sure what steps they've taken toward that. Okay. So it hasn't gone in front of city council yet? No, no. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you smoke Mr. on the horizon when it's in front of the city council. There'll be there'll be explosions and smoke and things like that. You'll, 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 you'll too soon, Jared. Too, too, too soon, Jared. Too soon. I'm, I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway. All right. And any other questions or any items? Then uh, I'll entertain. Motion, motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Nine, all. Wonderful nice job. job. Seven oh six. Hey, thanks, Phil. Be be safe and Travis, enjoy your lemon pez. I'm going to. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm gonna go mow the lawn. Bye all. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you for the meeting. Thanks. Have a good night, Bye, everyone. Bye.